Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So we're in a new state, new studio, and we're ready to get started on part three of the woodcut print project. So I've got some great feedback from the first set of videos, so thanks so much for watching and commenting. And today I'm going to carve the first block, set up a registration jig, and then tear down some paper and run the first print. And so I'm going to print it first by hand and then once through the press so I can kind of cover it all. So let's jump right in. Everyone's carving style is unique, and the way you want the block to look is really up to you. I don't like a lot of chatter or background being picked up when I print, so I clear out the areas fully around the block, but it's up to you how much you leave in the background. So on this block, everything in dark green is what I want to keep, so I start by using the V-gouge and outlining the areas. When you're using wood like sheen apply and carving parallel to the grain, it has a tendency to peel up ahead of your tool or kind of chunking out in the corners when you get to the really small corners. So a way to avoid this is to use a knife carving tool and cut along the boundary of what you want to keep. And then when you run along it with a V or a U gouge, it'll splinter up right along that line. An exacto knife would also work, but a woodcut knife has a nice angled side to ensure the wood remains strong along the edge, rather than making vertical cuts. I continue carving using smaller V and U gouges and work my way around the whole block. Here I'm outlining the area with a knife tool. It's really important that these tight corners are cut out first so the wood doesn't chunk out. Now with a small U-gouge, I can go along the cut line and make a perfect edge. It's really important to keep your tools sharp when you're doing this kind of work. You'll get cleaner lines and it's also a lot less work. For the larger traditional tools, I use a leather sharpening stroke and polishing compound. For the dockyard micro tools, I'm using the block that was specially designed for each tool. So you just apply compound to the block and then run the tool down a specific groove and it'll polish the edges in just a few passes. To make me feel like I'm making some progress, I grabbed the large U-gouge and cleared out some of the really big areas. Just be careful not to slip and take out any of your image, it's really easy when you're using the really big tools. So coming in on the home stretch, it's really more of the same, so no need to bore you with it. I typically turn on a podcast or music and just zone out for hours doing this. So there are a few things before we print. First you need to choose your paper size and then tear it down. I'm using Zirkle Bookweight Paper for this print since it's great for hand printing and press printing. Plus I had some extra left over from my last project. I left one inch of extra paper on one side of the print and used it to register on my printing jig that I make in the next step. I cut this edge with an X-Acto blade. So I have three sides with a torn deckled edge and one X-Acto cut edge that's extra long. Now to make the printing jig. This is just one way to do it and there are really many ways to do it and I'll use them in other projects. If I was just printing in one color, I could probably get away with just laying the block onto the paper and then flipping it over. But since I'll be doing multiple blocks, I need to register the same for each one, I'm making a jig out of quarter inch foam board. And this should hold up fine for a small addition. If you're using a press, you can also set up a registration system right on the press bed, but this works fine for hand printing and press printing. First I position my block on the foam board and make sure it's square with the edges and then carefully cut around the block through the foam. This will allow the block to fit into the foam core snugly and also allow subsequent blocks to sit in the same relative position. Next I measure off the block to the left side a good margin and cut the foam core off. Finally I mark a straight line that I can align my paper onto and then run a piece of tape along this edge for visibility and mark the center of the tape. You'll need to do the math to work it out for your prints but I left one inch of paper extra on the left side. So after I print, I can tear off one inch and have a centered image. But in the meantime, I have a straight square edge that I can align onto, as well as handle without worrying about getting ink onto it. Now it's time to roll up some ink and give it a print. I'm using Gamblin brand Portland Intense Black oil-based ink for this print. It's definitely one of my favorite relief inks. After a rough inking, I can see high spots on the plate that I want to get rid of. I want very little background chatter on this print, so I'm going to go ahead and carve them out. Finally, I can ink up the block for printing. Since I'm in desperate need of a nice wide brayer and this block has lots of narrow lines to print, I'm going to use a spare block on the edge of the printing block to help support the brayer and keep it level when I ink, so I don't ink up my background inadvertently. Once it's inked up, 
I can drop the block into the foam core jig and then align the paper along my taped line. I also marked the center line of the paper and the center line of the tape to register it up and down. Now I don't do much printing by hand since I have the press, but wooden spoons work great to apply enough pressure. You want to make sure to do plenty of rubbing to get the ink into the paper. You can also use a traditional bearing to apply pressure, but I prefer using the spoon in this case. Also a quick note, depending on your paper, if it's really thin or fragile, you might need a backing sheet so you don't wear through the printing paper with the spoon. And thinner papers are easier to print by hand. And here's a hand printed image. I could have put a bit more elbow into it and achieved a darker print, but now I'm going to do the same thing with the press. I aligned the paper onto the block, but before I run it through the press, I put this self-healing cutting mat on top. This helps even out the pressure of the rollers a little bit, but more importantly, the roller on my press has hundreds of small grooves cut into it, and these translate into the paper and can even damage the wood block with thinner papers that I use for a leaf prints. And here it is. You can see it's a lot darker than the hand print, but that's probably just because I didn't put enough work in when I was printing it by hand. All right, so that's it for part three of the series. You can click over here if you missed any of the previous videos or to jump to the next one. And make sure to leave a comment down below or share this video if you found it helpful. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back next time to carve at least three more blocks to add to this print and get the, the final edition done. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.